So we're going to be talking today about fitting the watts linkage kit. I've been thinking long and hard about how I'm going to approach this video. Normally I'm just filming things and putting it out there, but you know, in my quest for knowledge, I searched so many forums and took so many pictures of escorts uh, that it's very difficult for that information to come out in the videos of me actually installing the kit. And uh, because of that, I've decided to split this into two parts. So part one, this first video will be more information based, uh, what I discovered, uh, why kits are done the way they are and what's available. And the second video will be, will be focused on the installation. So if you're here because you want to install a kit uh, and you're thinking of doing that and you're, in, you're after the information, then stay tuned. If you're here just for the fabrication side of things, just to see me cock stuff up, then you can probably jog on from this video because it's not gonna be that fun. Um, we're just after the information. So starting online, uh, the search or the quest for knowledge, which is probably where your search has started, you can simply type in escort what's linkage on Google. And you're going to get an array of things coming up. You're going to get a few pictures here at the top, which uh, looks nice. People have installed the kits. And you start to come down and see uh, different companies offering their kits. You've got Gartrack, Burton Power, and Motorsport Tools. Um, the pictures are nice because they show you how uh, people have installed the kits. But what I've discovered with pictures is, you know, you might find a picture that looks good and an installation, look, installation looks good, but then you can't necessarily get the kit that they've used. So I just kind of skim past the pictures at the start and then go into the companies themselves to see what they have. So starting at Motorsport Tools, um, there's a few kits available. We've got basically this pre-made kit, which is very similar to the one I brought. Uh, however, I just bought the towers and the rods separately from, I think it was Rally Design or Peter Lloyd Rally, I can't quite remember. But Motorsport Tool here offers this uh, diff cover uh, on the back. And my axle, when it was made, already came with this Watts uh, diff cover already on it. So I didn't need that. I'm just trying to save myself a little bit of money. But you can see in this kit here, it's, it's pre made. You've got a short tower, sorry, a short tower and a long tower. Moving down, you've got another kit here. This is the same kind of deal. You've got a long tower, short tower, and then you've got basically a weld on cover that goes over the diff. That saves a little bit more money as well. And then you've got this daddy work spec flat pack kit here from Ikea. Uh, build it yourself. But what's interesting about this, I can't quite see, is you've got these two little rods here. And they're interesting for one reason. I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, so if we're moving on from that kit, you've got this kit which is just, just the towers. You've got a long tower, a short tower, and then you've got this reinforcement bar. And again, this is interesting uh, for reasons we'll talk about shortly. So three or four kits available on Motorsport Tools. Again, which one do you choose and why? I didn't know. You don't know. You know, what information do you have? There is none. So from there, I went to where I normally kind of have a look at Gartrack just to see what they're offering because they were the people who were installing this stuff back in the day, and they obviously... Uh, a very reputable company now they only offer kind of one kit they offer a watts tower bracket kit and then they also offer the watts link complete kit so you know there's not much choice here at all so you can see that they're only really fitting one kit themselves and this is the kit that's interesting because of these bars as i mentioned the motorsport tools that flat pack kit have got these bars and these bars are interesting because they add a lot more strength to the towers. Now these small bars are supposed to go through your boot floor, attached to the inside of the wheel well, although it would be the outside of the wheel well, but inside the boot. I'll show you some pictures shortly. But it attaches there, it goes through the boot floor, through your chassis rail, and then into the tower. So you kind of build a tower around this bar, and that adds a lot more rigidity to the towers. Now, in hindsight, I kind of wish I'd gone down that road, but you know, this was all new to me. I didn't really know what was going on. I just kind of made it up as I went along. Uh, I didn't use this kit and I didn't use these bars. However, I did know that these bars were available and I did consider it and I'll talk about what I considered and uh, and, and why I went the way I did. Um, so that's what Gartrack offers. Now, Motorsport Tools does that kit and uh, as I say, uh, they offer the kit with the flat pack bars, but they also offer the kit that I went with, <clears throat> the pre-made bars. And I figured the installation would be easier for me because I wasn't really sure where they were going to fit or where they were going. And I could see that they were contoured and kind of looked like they were made to fit the boot floor. 
however they are but it depends what you've done to your boot floor which will determine how well they fit and even if your boot floor is kind of standard you'll probably find that they don't fit that well and I'll show you some video footage in the second video about uh, the fitment um, so that's it right the reason I went with this fitted kit as well besides looking easier to fit was in my quest for knowledge I'd basically been to a lot of uh, rallies and motorsport shows and all sorts of stuff basically and every single escort I came across I would stick my head underneath with the camera and get as much footage as I could and I discovered a whole lot of things going on basically everybody approaches this slightly differently uh, and I think that's why there's no real clear instruction online about how people are installing these because literally people are making it up as, as they go along for example, this kit here, you can see they're on leaf springs and it's not slipper springs, it's the standard kind of shackled springs here. They've got a, a tower here. Now this isn't a Watts tower. Uh, if you don't really know the difference between the two, this one is a panard uh, rod here that goes from the tower and it goes all the way across to the far side of the axle and that prevents the axle moving laterally. Uh, but it kind of functions in the same way. Now this, so on a panard tower, you've got a long tower, and then this is opposing the motion both left and right of the axle because it's only attached at one end. So my thinking was the leverage for a panard system just on one tower would be huge, would be really trying to rip this away from the uh, chassis rail and the boot floor. Now you can see here it's heavily kind of bolstered up around the bottom here. There's, there's some, I don't know what that is. It looks like some box or something that's got in there just to really reinforce that up. And I think that's what you need. Um, but I was kind of expecting to see a rod that came through here up into the boot onto the outside of the rear wheel well. Uh, and this is a Den Motorsport Escort that was down at the Autosport Motor Show back in 2015. And... When I looked around here, this is the same car from the inside. You can see here, there's no bar that comes through up into the in, into the tub. Basically, on some of the pictures I'll show you later, that you'll you'll see this bar. Now, I, you know, I don't know if this car's been rallied. It looks like it's been used, and I mean, it's got pretty fat nine-inch kind of semi-slick tires on the back. So I'm imagining that the force that this thing is generating through tight corners and stuff is. It's huge, and if they've managed to get away with just one tower without this support bar going up and this just one panard rod that's connected, you know, it seems that one tower without the support in the middle is strong enough. So, I, you know, I was under the thinking that using a Watts linkage system, using the two towers, that, yeah, if I've got one long tower one end and a short tower the other, then, um, you know, I'm only taking half the load. Um, on the one tower so I, I figured if they've managed to get away with it with with one tower with huge big fat slicks which i'm not necessarily going to be running i figured i'd be fine with with two towers so that's that was my rationale basically for doing it the way i've done it and that is just install the two towers and uh, no support bar up the middle but if you are thinking of pure tarmac rally car with 10 inch tires at the back fully slick uh, then for sure I would probably go down the guard track path I would install that bar that goes up through the boot floor just to really add some rigidity to this long box because that's the one that's going to be under the most kind of leverage uh, again this is a Den Motorsport Escort this was up at the Colin McRae Rally in Knock Hill um, and again this was uh, fitted the long tower here straight to the chassis rail around the boot floor reinforced and this shorter box here you'll see wasn't heavily reinforced. You can see here there's no um, no like triangular supports coming off to the chassis rail or anything. And when I looked up into the boot, again there was no uh, there was no bar coming from here up into the boot floor to secure it all up. And this car had been absolutely hammered all day on a tarmac track, bone dry tarmac track with 10 inch tires at the back. And I figured, you know, if they can hoon around all day with that kind of force generated through, and you can see here, nothing's coming away. It's not peeling the boot floor away, or it's not damaging the chassis rail or anything. I figured if they can get away with that, then for sure what I'm using the car for is, is not going to be any issue. Again, this was another car at the rally. Uh, this was a shorter box. You've got the longer box here. But again, these were, were supported with triangular pieces coming down from the chassis rail. 
but again there was no support bar going from the middle of this up through the boot floor up into the wheel well uh, or the boot the wheel lining uh, so you know again this was a heavy duty tarmac escort that had been hooned around absolutely on the limit all day and you can see uh, that it's it's fine the only difference on this one though and i'll talk about this in more detail a little bit later is this bar here now, i think this bar here is more of a supporting bar to join this tower and the other tower together now i haven't got this bar in mine uh, so I'm not entirely sure if it's going to be successful or not for for the for the use I'm expecting mainly on gravel gravel tracks now with the odd track day and stuff um, I'm not sure I'm going to be you know, generating the forces necessary to start ripping these these towers off but if I do find that they start to crack or rip on the boot floor then I will uh, rectify that as and when yeah so let's have a look what's going on with this uh, watts linkage kit so here then in the first diagram you can see we've got a small box on the left, we've got a long box on the right and uh, you can see that the exhaust is what really determines where you have your long box and your short box. You notice in some kits on Motorsport tools that the longer box will be the near side which is passenger side in the UK and the short box will be driver's side. That's mainly because the engines and the escorts were um, predominantly cross flows uh, so the exhaust manifold was coming out on the left hand side of the engine as you were sitting in the car so the near side basically uh, and as such the long tower would be on the near side as well uh, to allow the exhaust basically to go up and over the axle it also clears that link bar so you have to be very cautious I made this mistake the first two boxes I bought I bought the wrong ones so I had to send them back swap them over so basically make sure that uh, first you determine which side your exhaust manifold is coming out on and then whichever side that is make sure you order a kit with a long box on that side and a short box on the opposite side. So that's what you can see here in this first diagram. A second diagram you can alleviate a lot of future problems regarding engine choice and uh, and yeah and exhaust sides by basically doing what motorsport tools have done on air escort and if you've ever noticed i'll probably put a picture up here you can see uh, that they've got two long boxes uh, and what this allows you to do is have ultimate freedom in which sides you have you sh you know you, you, you your bars you can go uh, exhaust left or right you just literally change the whole positions of your bars which is great i only discovered this really after i kind of purchased the second kit or swapped the second kit so uh, again in hindsight I may have considered putting a, a long box on both sides just because that gives you ultimate freedom if you're using the cross flow then the exhaust comes out near side if you've got a Pinto or an F20C out of a Honda S2000 like I will be having the exhaust manifold, uh, the exhaust manifold comes out on the offside driver's side basically so You'll notice on my pictures I've got the longer box on the right hand side and the short box on the left. Uh, so if, you, if you're if you not sure of engine choice just yet then I would go maybe two long boxes and then that just alleviates any future problems. Uh, the third diagram is what the works kit looks like basically. They've got uh, the long and short box. Uh, the large box, the longer box is the one that's going to have the larger force opposed to it and you've got the small box. Uh, but they've got this tube here in red that basically goes through the chassis rail mounts to the boot uh, or the wheel well within the boot and goes through the chassis rail down into the box so this is the ultimate setup if you're after uh, big loads uh, high g-forces high traction then I would go this way just to prevent these boxes ripping off also I think they may help uh, if you kind of taking shunts I guess to the back wheel left and right I guess if you take a big uh, lateral force to the axle I guess it also prevents it, uh, these boxes ripping off it's not something I considered to start with but as I say in hindsight I would probably put these these tubes through now the boxes just to make it all secure uh, this fourth picture here is this red bar across kind of the boot floor this is again going back to that motorsport tools kit that I was showing you right at the very start where you've got the two boxes and then you've got this bar support bar and also reinforcement bar that 
cast re reinforces the boot floor and also um, reinforces the two two towers together to you know just give them extra strength. Uh, the fifth picture here, just coming up, is what I've gone with. Basically, is uh, the boxes with this triangular triangulation setup. Basically, I tried to triangulate as much as I could using quite heavy duty plate from the boxes to the chassis rail around the chassis rail onto the boot floor on both sides just to try and get as maximum strength into them towers as i could but as i said if if i do have any problems with that in the future then i'll just basically take one side of the box off put a pipe up through the boot floor uh, as as it should be i guess and then put that put the side of the box back on and try and make it as strong as i can that way and finally here the boot floor this is a picture of the boot floor I'll pop a picture up here. You can see that there's a bulge on the left hand side, slightly bigger than the, the bulge that runs across the, the length here. And that was to allow the exhaust pipe to go up over the axle. Um, but because of that, when you actually come to fit these towers, you'll notice if you get the pre-made ones that are kind of contoured to fit the boot floor, you'll notice that one of the boxes, the towers, will fit a little bit further aft or a bit, a bit further backwards towards the rear of the car than the other one that they don't sit exactly opposite each other and because of this you'll the link arms you'll notice that one of them is completely straight so that the the mounting bush is 90 degrees to the the bot the link itself the link bar so that's a straight bar and then you have one that's it's called a crooked bar so the the bush is probably about 70 or 80 degrees off from the link bar itself it's, it's slightly crooked and that's to allow for this basically to allow for this box to sit a little bit further back in the car yet still um, link over to the watts uh, diff cover so yeah you'll see this in video too but yeah they don't they don't sit opposite so don't beat yourself up too much about trying to get these boxes directly opposite each other my understanding here is that they, they, they're not exact. Uh, I mean, it's not by much. It's only a couple of centimeters. Uh, and you'll even see that here. If I pop this picture up, you'll see the picture online that does give you the sizes and the measurements here. You'll see that one box is a little bit further back than the other one. And you can see, see here running through the middle of this box is it's talking about this support tube that comes up and mounts to the inner wheel well. But yeah, so that's something to bear in mind as well. So this is pretty much everything I've kind of uh, sussed up over the years in uh, one short picture. Take from that what you will. Uh, but all this aside, the biggest problem I had with putting the um, the when, uh, the Watts towers in is is basically axle placement. Once you go from leaf spring to the link bars, uh, you don't really know where the axle needs to be. Uh, I talked briefly about this when I was fitting the arches. Uh, at the back because you can't really fit the arches either until the wheel is uh, in the correct position and you can't really fit these either until you really have the axle and you really have it in the right position so I'll tag on a little bit of a video talking about axle placement as well and how I managed to basically get it as square as I could in the car uh, and again you can take from that what you will I'm not entirely sure the axle is in the uh, OEM position, the, the original position it came in, uh, just because with the leaf springs it's kind of variable geometry at the back there. <laughs> when the springs compress, the axle can kind of move backwards or forwards a little bit in the wheel well as well. It's, it's kind of strange. So finding a, a pinpoint position that you want to put the axle in is kind of utmost priority really. Because once you've got that, you can kind of lock it down and then from there you can fit your arches and fit these uh, Watts towers. So yeah. Hopefully that spreads a little bit of light on the situation. Uh, you can see kind of where I'm where I'm going. I've gone with the the boxes and why I've gone with the boxes on each side, the link bars, and the fact that well, why one of them is crooked, and then just talking about this triangulation. And you'll see all this basically take place in video two uh, or part two. So I hope this has been a help. If it hasn't, then uh, give it a thumbs down. <laughs> if, if, if you like it and it's it's give you an insight into what's going on there at the back uh, give it a thumbs up uh, but I hope it helps anyway okay well I'll catch you in part two where we start to fit this uh, these towers thanks for watching